Good day grade 11s. In this series, we will investigate refraction and total internal reflection of light. But before we investigate these new concepts, we need to make sure we know and understand another property of light, reflection. To remind ourselves about the law of reflection, look at this animation of a reflected ray of light. The dotted line we see in this animation represents the normal. Remember the normal is an imaginary line drawn at right angles to the boundary surface. The incident ray is the ray that travels towards the boundary. The boundary can be a flat mirror, the flat surface of a lake, or any plain reflective surface. The incident ray makes an angle with the normal. We call this angle the incident angle. Notice that it is not the angle between the ray and the surface. The incident angle is the angle between the incident ray and the normal. The reflected ray is the ray that bounces off the surface. The angle of reflection is the angle between the reflected ray and the normal. The law of reflection states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Notice that the two angles are equal. Now let us join Nelly as she explains more about this topic. You have already learned that light can be reflected and that the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence. But the other day as I was training in the gym, I was wondering, how is it that I can see myself in the mirror? Could this knowledge of how light reflects help me to answer my questions? So, why don't we see if we can explain why we can see ourselves in a mirror? When I stand two meters away from a full-length mirror, I can see my whole body. This seems quite logical because this is a full-length mirror. It is long enough for your whole body to fit into the mirror. The light from my head is reflected by the mirror. Light moves in a straight line from the top of my head, hits the mirror, and bounces straight back. An image forms somewhere on the other side of the mirror on this line. Another ray of light is reflected off my head at an angle. After it has hit the mirror, this ray of light is reflected back into my eyes. My brain then thinks that it is seeing a light ray that has traveled in a straight line. So, if we extend the reflected line backwards past the mirror, we see that it seems to come from the point where this ray meets the first ray. The image of my head forms at this point. But what about my feet? Well, light moves from my feet, just like from my head, and hits the mirror. The one ray of light is reflected straight back, but the other strikes the mirror at an angle. After this ray of light hits the mirror, it is reflected into my eyes, and so I can see the image. If we once again extend the reflected ray backwards through the mirror, we see that it meets the first ray. In this way, the image of my feet forms in the mirror. Are you beginning to understand how the image you see in a mirror is formed? But what do we notice about the image we see? Is the image the same size as the object? To answer this question, we would have to draw a scale diagram. For this diagram, we'll use the scale 10 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. Here we have a line that represents the mirror and here is the person. If the person is 1.6 meters tall, my figure should be 16 centimeters tall. And remember, we said the person stood two meters away from the mirror. So we have to ensure that we place our figure 20 centimeters away from the mirror. You should notice that the image forms 20 centimeters behind the mirror and is 16 centimeters tall. Wow! That means that the image of the person forms the same distance behind the mirror as the person is standing in front of the mirror and that the image of the person is the same size. This diagram confirms two properties of a mirror image. That a mirror image is the same size as the object being reflected and that the image is the same distance behind the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. Now the next property is a little more difficult. The interesting thing I want you to notice is what happens to the image when the person being reflected moves. When I wave my right hand in the mirror, it looks as if my image is waving its left hand. If I wave my left hand, it looks as if my image is waving its right hand. So, my right hand is on the left side in the mirror, and my left hand is on the right side in the mirror. 
We explain this by saying that the image is laterally inverted. This means that the image has been turned around, so the left is now right, and the right is now left. Can you think of a situation where it is a good thing that the image in a mirror is laterally inverted? That's right, with ambulances. When you look at the word on the ambulance, it seems to be the wrong way around. When an ambulance is behind a car, the driver can see the word ambulance the right way around in their rear view mirror. The word ambulance is written the wrong way around deliberately so that a car's driver will see it the right way around and know that there's an ambulance behind them and if necessary, get out of the way. Thanks Nelly. We will make use of this information about reflection on plane mirrors when we start with refraction in another lesson. You will find more information about geometric optics at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye.